to the cloud and not here. Okay, well, thank you so much again, Katie, for being my, um, my tester. So what I'm gonna do is I wanted to take the time and break down how to get paid in command in terms of size. So as you know, there's a buyer and seller side. So what I wanted to do was take a few minutes with you as my tester. And what we're gonna do is just focus specifically on the buyer side. And so feel free to, at any point in time, stop me. And so we're just gonna cover the buyer side only. I'll have you follow along with me and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so that everybody else can see what I'm doing. And then you wanna follow along within your command and then just, like I said, stop me at any point in time. So let me go ahead and share. And so earlier, um, I didn't have any issues, but sometimes I've been having issues with my laptop um, as it relates to functionality. So give me a moment to jump in again, because I had to like log out of uh, command and sure enough, here we go. So hold on. So can you see, still see my screen, even though I'm in incognito, the black? Can you still see that? Okay, perfect. Yes. All right. And like last night, I was just playing around with everything, trying to figure out why can I get this to work? I'm all in my settings, like what is going on? I uploaded a new browser, Chrome browser. I'm like, oh my gosh, all my little bag of tricks is not working. <laughs> Okay, so yay, we're now into command. Um, so um, like I mentioned in previous training, everything begins with the contact. And I always like to stress that because a lot of times, especially when you have multiple deals or multiple clients that you're kind of going between, it's easier to start the process as it relates to generating that opportunity within the contact card. So it's easier to go that route. So I'm just gonna go into Adam Miller. Um, I haven't used him a lot as my little tester as well. So just wanna clarify, I went into um, the dashboard, went into contact the applets on the left-hand side. And so now I just clicked on Adam Miller and now I'm in his specific contact card. So from there, you'll see um, the opportunity. Now you may not have any numbers here, but that just means, you know, what have you sold or what's pending? And so it's always going to, um, command is always gonna give you the number of opportunities with that kind of um, snapshot over here to the right-hand side. So I'm gonna do a new one for today's sake. So I'm clicking on opportunities. So it'll show you the last time I entered something with Adam, which was the 19th. So I'm just gonna create a new opportunity. So I'll click on that. So the, the one thing that I do want to stress is the reason why it's a best practice to actually go into that contact card is because a lot of whatever information that you have, it's, auto, it's automatically going to populate. So it's less um, data entry, if you will, on your part. So if you were a member of a team, then you would go here and select the team. Um, but solo agents, it'll automatically populate you as the owner. Um, here is where so, it says, oh, yes. So for the teams, mm -hmm. so like I'm, uh, I think technically I'm not like on a KW team, how KW defines it, but I'm on a team for like with Bob Cartwright. Right. So for in that case, would I have to select that team or not? So here is my understanding and um, I'll do some, I'll double check and confirm with Shelby, but from my understanding, since you are not, um, you're on a team, but it's not specifically a team within Bob Cartwright because of his legacy and his transition. From my understanding, you would still go in as an individual solo agent. However, once you get to the commission stage, whatever split or agreement that you have worked out with Bob Cartwright, that information needs to go into the notes. So whatever, you know what I mean? Whatever agreements you have with him, that's where that role. I'll clarify with that, but I'm almost 99% sure that is the case with Bob Cartwright because of his legacy and, and grandfathering in as the original owner. <laughs> okay, does that answer your question? And I'll, I'll follow up and get that you know specific answer. But like I said, I'm probably 99% sure that's accurate. A great question. So here you go into buyer, because um, we're just gonna focus on the buyer side. It's automatically gonna pre-populate the um, Adam Miller. Um, in this situation, if there was a co-buyer, and let me back up, 
making sure that if Adam Miller, for this case, we know that he's married to his better half, Jessica, if she's not pulled up, then that means I didn't list her as um, his wife or spouse. And so you would just want to make sure that if that is the case, do that, you know, before you open the opportunity, which you can always go back and correct it. So no worries there. So I could potentially, I think I have her. Yes. So I could potentially um, go ahead and list her now since I know that she's in my database. Um, so then here underneath um, opportunity name, they'll have Adam Miller buyer. So you can add Jessica if you wanted to. And then if you knew the property on the buyer side, if you knew the property already, that's another thing that you can add. If you don't know, it's totally fine because sometimes when you're just creating the opportunity, you may not have um, you know, the specific property that you know, you're going to work a deal on, but you can always go back and add that at a later time. But the best practice at the very least is to make sure that you have the client name and whether they're buyer lister, um, but this case buyer. So then if there were any custom tags, you would put that in there. Um, estimated close date. Um, keep in mind that for me, for the sake of training, I'm really going to focus only on the red asterisks. However, as you in the real life situation, you would want to make sure that you have as much information on here. So I'm just going to do an estimated close and I'm just going to go February for now. So red, or excuse me, March 1st for now. So the time frame you can put, you know, maybe three months is going to be the time frame I'm thinking they're going to close. Um, if you know that, if you know their budget, then you will put their budget in there. So I'm just going to put a random number for now. Um, or actually, I'm going to do this. So I'm just going to um, really play. So, <laughs> so then 3% would be the commission rate or whatever um, you have agreed with the client. Um, but standard, as you know, is 3%. Um, and then I'm just going to make it nurture. So you can, you know, definitely whatever stage you are currently in with that contact, you can change it. Um, either the um, phase, you can change it to cultivate appointment wherever you are. Um, I'll just change it to appointment so you can see. And then whatever, you know, then it'll automatically change, you know, your stage. Or if you need to go back and do stage, wherever stage you are, you can do that part. Um, so I'm just going to play with it and say, you know, initial appointment. So then what you would do is hit create from there. So any questions so far? Okay, so then now it shows you that this is the latest and greatest opportunity. It has the date um, and the year. So I'm just gonna go back into this because now we can go through the sales or basically move Adam through that sales pipeline. So the first thing you wanna do, which we're not gonna really get into today, is that you would just wanna make sure that you go click on documents um, and I'll just do it really quickly. You'll go into documents. You want to make sure that in order for you to create a room within DocuSign, first of all, making sure that DocuSign is added to your um, command. And I'll show you that um, a little later. Um, or actually, do you want me to show you now? Or are you comfortable with where that is? Okay, so I'll show you that really quick. So let me move the screen here. Okay, so how you um, determine if you have... Um, connected your DocuSign, your KW DocuSign account. I want to stress that. So you would quickly go to, excuse me, you would go to your avatar, top right-hand side, and then you would go into settings. And then from settings, you'll be able to see all of the applications that are currently open. And so DocuSign is the first one. So then if it wasn't connected, you would just hit connect and go through that process. So that's how you know um, that you did it. And then let's go back into our, let's go. And then I think I wanna, let's go back here just so we can walk through this again. But you can also go through opportunities, um, hopefully. So we were in Adam Miller. So I'm gonna go back in Adam Miller again. And there we go. So then we're going to go back into opportunities again, the February 2nd one. So now, um, now we're going to go to offers and commission tab. So now that we're in the offers and commission tab, the first thing that's going to happen is now, let me back up. 
in a live situation, we would have gone through that sales pipe pipeline where now um, Adam and Jessica are ready to make an offer on whatever property. So that's where we are in the quote unquote live stage. Um, so then we would click on add new offer. And then here, best practice is you definitely want to say initial offer or first offer or whatever you want to say, just in case, you know, something falls through, you just want to keep track um, or if there are any problems um, or if there needs to be any revisions, you just want to make sure that you're sequential in the, the offer so that you can co clearly communicate not only with your client, but then also if you need to bring your broker in on stuff, which you will, you know, that they're also clear, like this is the first one, this is the second one, and so forth and so on. Um, and then again, the best practice too is also to have initial offer um, and then have the address as well. Um, so then I'm just gonna say, create the offer. So then it's gonna take you to this offer um, tab category. And so right now in Teal, we're at the offer details. Well, you'll see that each time we go through this migration, we'll go from parties to terms to agent analysis. So then here again, the version is here in terms of this is the initial offer. We're just using a, a date of 210, excuse me, 2 2 um, 2021. So the first thing we want to do is we want to always start with select um, from KWLS. This allows you um, to select the property that he is buying, him and Jessica, even though they don't know it. <laughs> so then what you want to do is the first thing I always tell agents, Sometimes they'll just automatically start either searching through the street address or the MLS. You can do either way. But the key thing you want to remember is always make sure where it says show that if you don't have any listings and you go in, you won't be able to see everything. So we want to say all so we can see everything for the sake of the training today. So then what we're going to do, you can scroll down and see um, whatever property that you know, you're looking for and you can search the MLS. So I'm just going to write this down because we're going to do, I'm just going to pick one at random. So I'm just going to say we're going to do this one in North Carolina. So then you'll see how it all automatically pre-populated all of the details from what we just clicked. Uh-oh, did I lose you? You're still there? Well, I'll keep going just in case she joins back, hopefully. Um, nothing happened. Um, so then we'll go to parties. And then parties, it has Adam Miller here, seller, um, it should automatically pre populate who is the um, seller. But if not, I'll just put in here randomly, um, myself for now. And then you want to make sure that you've got your fax number. Um, if there is a fax number, whatever the address is, put that in there. Um, if they're pre-qualified, excuse me, pre-approved and pre-qualified. And then here, the associate's name, um, the seller agent is James Hill. Um, hey, there you are. I was like, where did she go? Okay, so well, what I, I, I don't know what happened. Sorry about that, guys. That's okay. So I just went into, I clicked on just once I did the um, KW or excuse me, just picked the um, property that I wanted just for test um, within that KWLS um, platform. So now I'm at this stage where it's basically giving you the party details. So you'll see now we went from offer details to party details. So Adam was already pre-populated. The seller information wasn't in there, but you would need to make sure you, you know, obviously put that in there. Um, selecting whether uh, him and Jessica are pre-approved or not. Um, and then James Hill is actually the listing agent. So um, if you don't have his email, put that in email in there. Um, and you can find that by either going into the referrals within command, or if you wanted to jump out or stay within command and then go back into KWRI, you can go into white pages and get that information um, as well in terms of if his information doesn't pop up. And then um, phone number, um, the representation in terms of me or you in this case, whoever the agent that is um, helping the buyer. So then you would add your phone number. I'm just gonna put my phone number in there. So then now we're going to go to terms. So then within terms, you would just put in, you know, what they are offering, whether it's, you know, what percentage or what amount is cash, what amount is finance. So 
So I'm just going to say 200 is cash and then 210 is financed. Um, and that gives me the original sales price of what that listing was um, or that home was. So then whatever earnest money in terms of percent, you will put that there. I'm just gonna say a random five for right now. It'll automatically calculate that. And then the option fee, um, just to clarify the option fee, is typically it's more so for Texas, um, the state of Texas, um, as it relates to not to get confused with earnest money, but in the state of Texas, they do option fee to where um, the buyer will say in this offer to the seller, if I, for whatever reason, decline not to move forward, I agree to pay you X amount of money. But again, typically you don't see that in Hawaii, but you need to defer to your broker. So I'm just telling you where that option fee originated and what it was and originally, but you will definitely need to check with your broker about specifics. So questions? Yeah. Um, so on the earnest money, can you do it kind of the other way? Can you put in the earnest money amount? Like, let's say the earnest money is 12000 Can you type in So 12, then 000? it really goes by um, percentage. So you would have to figure out what percentage that is. Let me see if you can do that. I think you might be able to do that. Yeah. And you said 12,000. Yep, you can do that. So um, sometimes you can, or I just, some fields are grayed out. I just wasn't sure if it was gonna allow me to do that, but yes, um, I went ahead and changed it. And yes, you can, if you know exactly what the amount is, then it will automatically calculate based on the sales price, what that percentage is. Any other questions? Great question. So then termination option, again, that's related to the option fee, uh, seller's cost, you know, if there was, um, will contribute, you know, X amount of dollars, um, seller will contribute to the settle cost, the residential service contract. I'm just going to put in a random number here. I'm just going to say, just so you can see. Um, and then now we go, if, if all of this is correct, um, or when all of this is correct, then we just click on agent analysis. And so from here, you could list the pros and cons that you know of. So that way you can present this to your client in terms of what are the pros, what are the cons, summary. You could put that all in there just to have a nice PDF, if you will, of everything. So then you save it. So then a couple of things I wanna highlight here, you can accept it, reject it. If you reject it, um, prior to the offer and commission tab being within the same tab, we used to have to reject it and then go back to green sheets and add another green sheet. Now, no need. We can, now that the tabs are combined or the tab is combined, you can accept, reject multiple offers if you got into that position right in command and you don't need to use green sheets for anything. So then if you wanted to um, you know, edit this offer, add negotiations, send the offer. You would just click on the three horizontal ellipsis dots and then whatever option you wanted to do, you could do from there. So, um, so the buyer made this offer and what if the seller counters the offer? Are you creating? So then what you would, so then what you would do is you would reject that and then you would go back into um, the three dots um, or if you wanted just to add a negotiation, you can go here. Um, I would consult with your broker what they think the best strategy is. Um, some, they may want to have an add a negotiation here to that, to existing offer, or they may want to, depending on the circumstances, to reject it and go through here. But you can add a negotiation. But what I would do is just reach out to your broker to make sure which way they want you to go um, in terms of if they just want to add a negotiation to this specific offer or if they want you to actually close this, most likely, I would tend to think, you know, this would be a better, cleaner option, you know, from a command standpoint, but I can't advise you what the broker would say, but from a command perspective, it may be best to do that. But I, again, you need to defer to your broker on that, how they want to handle that. Because technically it's not, um, they're not, they're just countering at this point and not rejecting. So again, you know, have that conversation with your broker. Any other great questions though? Okay, so then just 
for the sake of today, we're just going to say, you know, we're good to go. We're going to accept it. So we're just going to accept it. So then what's that? Once you accept it, then it goes into the manage commission stage. And so this is where you are going to submit all of your information to Shelby to make sure that she's got everything that she needs in order to create a DA and then move to the next phase. So every, the only thing that's changing in this process, and I wanted to be clear about that, is just everything leading up to the DA. Once the DA is created, that process has not changed. All of that other stuff on the back end remains the same. It's just the front end is changing to get to the DA point. So then you hit manage um, commission. So then here, it's going to give you a summary of everything. This is the payout summary on the right-hand side. So you want to do edit general information. So you want to edit the first thing because I got a red error. It said the contract date. I'm just going to scroll down here and then just do the first, just to put in a date for now, but obviously you would put in whatever the real date is. So then save the changes to that. Again, this is the DA. You see how this, there's no ID for the DA. That's because we haven't submitted it yet to um, Shelby. So then here, um, hold on just one quick second. will be out shortly. Okay, sorry about that. So um, then the second thing you want to do is um, edit the agent payment. So this will be where you are actually, let me take a step back. You're going to put your information as it relates to um, the agreement that you have with Bob Cartwright. You would put that on the notes, add note side, um, but we'll just go through this first. So then here, the, um, the units that we're talking about for this specific sale is just the one unit. This is the average agent gross commission. So then it's just going to, you should have all of this already pre-populated in terms of what your individual split is. If it's not in here correctly, again, let us know, put that in the notes, and then it'll automatically cal calculate what the company commission is. Additional deductions, um, e &O, it, I'm not sure why it's grayed out. Um, so if it still is, um, I will have to figure out why that is. So I'll have to probably open a ticket for KWRI, but it wasn't last week, it wasn't grayed out. So I don't know if they're doing some sort of fix um, for this, I would assume so. Um, so then you would do um, KW Cares if you're doing, yes. Under the ENO, what is that for? ENO is just for legal fees only. Great question. So I wanted to be very clear. You're not changing how your if you have an office fee or most most do whatever your agreement is, that is not changing. So this is ENO is just strictly legal fees. So any additional legal fees that pertain to this specific transaction. So but not including the office um, fees. That's that process is separate from this. Um, so great question though. So then if you wanted to do KW can, kids can, bold scholarship, you could do that. So right now it just shows you what the net is to you, um, the agent. So if you wanted to add an extra payment, specifically um, anything re regarding the referral, bonus, deduction, concessions, um, the key thing that you wanna add in this um, field would be your TC and or TM, whatever you call that, that person. So you would go into the deduction category. So then you would say whatever that fee is, if it's 500 or whatever it is, um, you would have to know or need to know um, their tax ID or FN number um, and then whatever that is. So then here, and if that person is filling this out on their behalf, they would know that. So then they, they or you, you would just wanna make sure you put their name in here. And I'll just use Cheryl because she's my guinea pig that I use since I already have her pre-populated. And then you just want to say um, if she's if you call her TCTM or whatever it is. Um, and then you would just hit if it doesn't populate, you know, for me, I did it, but you can always literally type it in. So in terms of pay, who to pay it to, then you put in their address in terms of where the check goes to. So I'm just going to put our office address for now, and then it's going to ask you for the phone number. 
and then email address. So once you do that, you click add. So then it'll list, you know, this is Cheryl, this is my TC. Then if you wanted to add anything else, you could, but for now I'm just gonna say save changes. So it, it didn't look like it got deducted. It did. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, it's there. So, um, so then on this side, um, you would go into um, the summary just to see um, the deduction, deduction. So the summary is just going to say other deductions, which you see on the left hand side, it specifically has Cheryl on that side. Um, sorry if I went too fast. So you'll see Cheryl Hill actually communicated in the, this is kind of the details. And this is on the right hand side, the summary, just so you can make sure that those dollar amounts match. So then notes here, you would add um, a category. So if you had legal fees, you would say E, e and O and then whatever those legal fees are. If you had a productivity coach, um, you would put PC and then whatever their name is. If you don't know the percentage, that's fine, but just put it in whoever that is. I'm just gonna always use Nicole as my guinea pig. Um, so then I put Nicole there. And then if there was a specific split in your case, Katie, um, between you and, and Bob Cartwright, then you would put that whatever that is, um, or if there's anything else. Um, the other thing I do want to make mention is you want to put your GET. You want to put your GET here. Um, so then your GET Maui. Um, and so let me clarify that. GET as it relates to whatever island you're on. So if you're a big island, um, then you would say big island Kona or Hilo, um, Kauai, we've got agents on Kauai, and then and or Maui. So in your case, it would be Maui. Um, and then any other notes that need to be in here, clarifying things, um, you just want to make sure that you know, whatever special nuances it, that relates to this specific sale, you, you put them in the notes section because then that will be the red flag for Shelby in terms of processing your DA. So then you would hit save. Now, the key thing that I do wanna say is once that note's created, that um, teal pop-up shows you that I created my note. And then from there in a live situation, it's not going anywhere until you hit submit. I'm not gonna hit submit, but for you in a live situation, you'll need to hit submit. Yes, questions. So since we're talking about buyer's side, so if I have a co-buyer's agent, kind of the same idea as Bob Cartwright, but if, yes. so if I have a co-buyer's agent, I would put it in the notes. I wouldn't change the So units. then if you have a co-buyer um, situation, mm -hmm. um, you. I'll have to confirm with Shelby how she wants that done. Um, but if it was any other category in terms of another agent, you would put that information in there. But a co-buyer, I would probably most likely put it in the note section for now, but I'll get back to you and we can send another clarif clarifying note out to how she wants to do that. Currently right now we have the categories are um, add another agent and or add another co-broker um, payment. So you can definitely do those two things, but I'll have to ask her about the co-buyer. Great question. Any other questions about that? Okay, so that's pretty much it in terms of the buyer side. A um, Couple of other things that I wanna stress in terms of timeline. Um, definitely refer back to the um, PDF as it relates to the PowerPoint from the actual training, um, and that's on the week at a glance. Um, but in terms of your documents, everything leading up to the actual offer um, for a transaction, um, you just want to make sure that you are adding your documents in a timely manner. And then also, you know, if you have a TC and or TM, making sure that they are uploading those documents if it's not you, and then also that your timelines are up to date. The other thing as it relates to um, once you have an offer um, accepted, you wanna make sure that prior to close that you've got all the necessary documents up, um, sent to the proper people. Um, typically for Shelby, I know she's asking two weeks before, so just being compliance with her 
Um, and so I'll get with uh, Shelby and um, Michelle Del Rosario just to kind of work that part out. But I know Shelby's saying two weeks. Um, and so I would just be in compliant with whatever she's offering um, or she is suggesting agents to do. And then as it relates to the compliance piece um, with Roy, right? Rob, oh my gosh, Rob. I don't know why I keep saying Roy. I wanna give him a new name, I don't know why. So then for his compliance piece, that part needs to be done five days to close. So I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. And that's just making sure from a com compliance standpoint, not from a getting paid standpoint, but a from com compliance standpoint, you've got everything necessary so your close goes as smoothly as possible um, to try to ward off those last minute things. So I wanted to call out those two things. Go ahead. So we did, we set up all this commission stuff and then we hit the submit button. And how, what do we do in the event that there's, you know, so there's some negotiations and the agent, the buyer's agent. Oh, okay. I lost you, your sound went out. Oh, and so the buyer's agent decides to credit the buyer $500 for a repair out of their commission. So right. now we need to go in to adjust the D or, you know, adjust the commission to reflect that. How do we go about doing that? So then what you would do is once it comes back, um, then you would work with Shelby to see how she wants to do that. She should be able to override that and update it. So I would first kick it to email Shelby and say, these are the changes and then work with her in terms of if she wants to go in and manually up that, update that for you or if she wants you to go back in and remember where we showed you, let's see if it'll let me go back here. Um, where we had that offer and then where you can go into the negotiations um, so you would just need to get with Shelby to see how she wants you to handle that. But I would always start with best practice. I would encourage every agent is when you get into those um, special situations for a specific transaction to chat with Shelby first to see how she wants you to handle that. Any other questions? Great questions, though. Not that I can think of. Okay. Okay. Um, the tab in and of itself is pretty straightforward. You know, obviously each transaction is going to be unique and different and have some nuances, but I would say, you know, definitely when you get into those situations, um, I would get with Shelby to see how she wants you to add that information, whether she wants you to, whether she wants you to do it or if she's going to do it on the back end within command MC. Okay. Great. Well, thank, thank you. you so much. I appreciate your time for just jumping in and kind of being my tester just to have some back and forth so people are just not hearing me <laughs> and then get to a monotone like she's putting me to sleep. So hopefully <laughs> it was beneficial to those that will um, watch this at a later date. But thank you so much, um, Katie. I really do appreciate it. I know you had a lot going on today, but I really appreciate your time. So thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Okay. Bye. See you. See you. Bye-bye.